AWS Security, Azure Accelerators, and a new owner for Mashri. Coming up next on Cloud Chronicles. Hi, I'm Andy McCaskey from SDR News. Got a great episode of Cloud Chronicle coming up today. I want to introduce the host of the show, Patrick Bashar. Uh, greetings this week from uh, from sunny Calgary again, my home. Um, uh, after a bit of an unconventional start last week, we're back and we have some uh, fantastic issues to cover. Um, I think we'll start with with some Amazon focus here. We've there's you know a couple stories around. Um, security and availability, which of course are super hot topics, especially for the enterprises they consider their move to the cloud. And Afir's got some some news for us, so Afir, take that away. Great, thank you very much. Uh, it's great, it's great, you know, to see that uh, we are running this show, and uh, this is of course our second session, I, I believe. Um, here in Tel Aviv, it's already evening, so it's not so really sunny. Although you know, Tel Aviv is most <laughs> of the time sunny. Anyway, about Amazon Cloud, so I'm, I'm giving you some uh, headlines from PC World today. Amazon looks to move security appliances to the cloud. Um, basically, what we see, you know, a trend that we see, and it's not a trend, it's a constant behavior of, of this leader. You know, 70% of, of cloud market belongs to Amazon today, and they're actually doing great things, you know, moving towards making their infrastructure really, really secured and really, really, on, you know, um, taking in mind all the considerations and all the risks when you're talking about public cloud, you know, the shared environment, the multi-tenancy, people that with, you have risks within the environment. So Amazon is actually looking to expand security offering. And they're going to, what, we, what we understand, they're going, going to expand their uh, intrusion detection uh, systems, IDS, uh, more extensive uh, encryption features, and it's not it's not uh, uh, news or it's 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 already not a news that on the start of, of this month they produced they, they they announced that the VPC you know the VPN uh, of, of of their cloud the virtual private network um, will be available for every new user with, with in every new account on Amazon will have by default its own VPC. So right. Yeah, so basically, uh, uh, you know, the security group uh, notion, the, this, you know, small doors that you need to manage, this complex environment that they created, now it becomes more manageable with grouping, you know, of the resources behind one a, a, a policy, one, po one security policy. Um, anyway, anyway, it's, it's, it's really interesting, you know, to see how they are growing, how they uh, and we will touch it later with the APIs. You know all this uh, all this notion of your ecosystem and, and startups in this area. And I'm jumping to a, a great discussion that I had last week, basically with uh, a, 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 an entrepreneur of of a new system that uh, doing backup policy for Amazon Cloud using Amazon API and a click you can create or provision a policy for backup so you make sure that you are not backupping too much, losing money, or you are backupping you know, less than what we need, what you need, and you can you are in, in a risk of losing data. Right. Um, it's a new startup from, from Tel Aviv, um, very interesting, very great, you know, a great UI. I don't think that I saw a kind of you know the the, the, the application is, is N2W and number two W dot uh, Com. I, I I don't know if we if we saw this type of preacher or this type of application um, to that that you know enables you to to create like a policy. Have you heard about or you saw something you know that, that resembled to what I've just described? Um, maybe not specifically integrated with AWS. I know of um, I know of a handful of vendors that have built um, solutions to lay on top of kind of inter data center solutions like VMware vSphere. And I've always thought that was interesting. I mean, certainly that's the that's the market leader in your data center today. But I would think that vendors, I mean, when I ask them, when I ask vendors like that, you know, how, how are you going to support your customers as they onboard to the cloud? And, you know, as we all have heard so many times, the, the, the backup, at least the long-term 
backup market it fits very well to the public cloud. So it's kind of interesting to me when vendors will build integration on top of the VMware suite of products, even vCloud Director, but not to, uh, to your point, the 70% market share of the public cloud. You know, to me, you're, you're missing a real keen opportunity there. So um, to answer your question directly, I don't know of many that interface solely to, to Amazon. Um, on a consumer level, I just installed something the other week on my Mac that will... Uh, back up the system to Glacier, and I think that's a really that's a really interesting potential too. I, I think you have to be careful on the on the consumer side because there's an expectation, you know, with things like Dropbox and Bitcasa, those kind of things. There's an expectation that your backups will be available, um, you know, very quickly, and you'll be able to go out and just you know pick a file that you may have deleted by accident on your desktop. And that's not really the Glacier use case. It's more about long-term storage, almost for you know, compliance and sort of um, uh, uh, reg regulation. So I think on the consumer side, you have to be a little bit careful, but on the enterprise side, I mean, th they know that, right? So to me, um, building services on top of Glacier or, or, or really any storage in Amazon, you know, that sort of the tiered storage, depending on, on what you want your backups to look like and how you use them sort of culturally within your organization, I think that's, um, you know, that's, that's really important and, and probably a no-brainer for me. So I'm surprised I haven't seen more. Um, um, the one that, that you know you sort of you had discussion with that fellow, I think I think he's right on track. Yeah. So the next piece of news that that we found really interesting, I guess probably not this week. It might have been sort of into last week. Is is the notion that Microsoft is trying to redefine their as a service offerings to include you know more on the infrastructure side. I think it's no secret that while you could stand up compute instances within Azure, it was all really from a developer perspective, right? It really was a platform as a service offering. And so, you know, the the announcement I think the week before last was really around the the general availability of the of the more infrastructure as a service offering coming out of Azure. And I think um, Ophir heard some um, you know some interesting news from Microsoft around accelerator programs, kind of built on the back of that launch. Is that right, Ophir? Yeah, exactly. So we're talking about um, um, the accelerator program of, of Microsoft that is, has a great presence here in Tel Aviv. You know, the Israeli startup nation and. Um, basically, we're talking about dozens of uh, new startups that, that, that are nurtured by Microsoft. You know, the big fish one wants to have these these little ones that cleaning its 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 skin and making you know uh, things look good. So this is what Microsoft is doing, and they're doing basically doing they're doing great job with with the startups here in Israel. They're investing a lot of time, money, and efforts in order to maintain that, and basically they feel what I felt, from the, you know, maybe the highlight of what I felt from this event is that they want the startups to uh, help them mature their platform, their infrastructure platform, right. and be able to, you know, capture, with, you know, time to market is, is of an essence and Amazon is, is, you know, is there and they are trying to get, you know, to catch up. Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting, isn't it, in terms of, um, Competing with Amazon, I think everyone, you know, whether they say that directly or not, obviously they're thinking that. And if we look at the uh, the filing that Amazon did last year with uh, the Security Exchange Commission, they said they debuted 135 new features. And so, for me, I know people don't like the labeling of Amazon as a platform because it muddies the platform versus infrastructure as a service definition. But <clears throat> to me, it really is. It's not just <clears throat> infrastructure off a menu. It's all the services around it, um, and and it'll be interesting to see sort of whether Microsoft views the infrastructure as a service, sort of future landscape as as just pure infrastructure, or will they be building, you know, a similar set of services on top of it so that IT organizations can really really fast track their their sort of onboard, right? I mean, obviously with with public cloud, uh, that's already the case, but if you're building services like load balancing or security offerings on top of it that are sort of one click get started kind of services that becomes pretty appealing and you know who better than Microsoft kind of the king of the history in, in big infrastructure and big systems um, to do that so it'll be really interesting to see yep yep exactly exactly and I, I totally agree with you um, about about you know the point of of Microsoft uh, they recognize you know and, and, and they recognize Amazon they say that they are a computer they understand that what I feel is you know and what we saw over the last year is that all the big, you know, the giant vendors are going after Amazon, you know, starting from calling servers, instances, etc. You know, they will, I believe, they will do whatever it takes 
to make it like Amazon because Amazon is the leader. Is, is, is they are educating developers, they are educating the companies, and they are doing a great job. Right. Yeah, isn't it funny, Afir, when when you and I would attend events even two years ago, and nobody would admit that that um, Amazon is a competitor. We all knew it. Yeah. We could all see it. But it was, uh, oh, no, the only thing in the enterprise is doing is, is dev and test. And fast forward two years, and, and that landscape's really changed. It's it's nice to see a little more, um, you know, people being a little more candid about, about what they're doing, right? You see the HPs, the IBMs, the Microsoft, they're, they're in direct competition, and they know that. So, um, yeah, the, the services on top of the plain infrastructure as a service will be really interesting to me. Yeah. Um, now, numbers numbers are you know, you know, not, not mistaken, and we're talking about... One billion dollars or three billion dollars from Amazon side, growing like crazy. Right, for sure. Yeah. And so, you know, as we shift to that that software defined world, I know that term is super overhyped and overused. But really, when you talk about you know an old physical server in a data center moving to a virtual machine that can live anywhere, I mean, there's no better example um, of software defined than that. And I think when we talk about old hardware companies reinventing themselves. Um, with services and software, that's a perfect segue into the, you know, the, the sort of Intel buying mashery story that sort of concludes what we want to talk about today. Here you have a real traditional hardware manufacturer with declining sales. You know, you're, you're moving into a, a market that will tolerate probably less PCs and more mobile devices. And, and Intel doesn't have the hold on mobile chips just like they do on the desktop and server side. So, you know, they see that side of their business hurting a little bit. And so I think they look to, you know, to make inroads on the software side. And what better way to do that than to buy this, you know, API integrator or, or API as a service vendor mastery. To me, it seems like a no brainer and a really smart move. Yeah, it's, it's, again, this is all, all you know, uh, uh, going with the market of an online market and no more soft, you know, no more servers. You're, you're, you're working within your laptop and, you know, drilling into data and, and consuming all the functionality through an API of these cloud vendors. And of course, Intel is maybe, not maybe, but the one that delivers, you know, the, the underlying, you know, uh, hardware, they need to, to catch up. And, and they are doing great stuff there. I heard, you know, I have, I have several, you know, friends that are in high position in Intel, and I can tell you, they are doing great stuff. They're investing great amount of money to make sure that they will be where the market is. Yeah, and I, I didn't mean to make it sound like this is their first move into software. Obviously, you know, this is a longer term. They, they've seen the writing on the wall. So, you know, this is just one more sort of uh, strategy to help them do that. And it's interesting. You think about cloud computing in general and how, you know, how quick and easy it is to go and, and obtain compute network and storage. Um, versus doing it in your own data center. I don't think, you know, mash rate's no different. If you've had to build integrations, uh, uh, you know, of your applications to public services, that's a long and arduous road. So to be able to consume, you know, almost, again, I know as a service is, is deeply abused and overused, but if you can sort of consume integration as a service, right, or ordering off a menu saying, hey, I want to integrate my app with, with Skype or with Salesforce, and to do that in a very quick way just by consuming pre-built sort of integration methodology, um, you know, it fits into that cloud model very well. The whole, you know, I want to innovate very, very quickly with with as many or as few barriers to entry as possible. I mean, that just it just sits really well. I mean, I've used a service similar, never used Mastery, but I've uh, I've used another kind of API as a service. And boy, let me tell you, if if you're um, willing to be a little bit generic in your approach, you can get so much work done in such little time. So I'm looking forward to see, you know, whether Intel can maintain that that smaller company, that agile. Um, development with inside mastery or whether they get sort of consumed into the Intel Borg, so to speak. And, you know, that's always the challenge with a smaller company coming into a massive company is can you retain that culture that allows them to innovate and follow the market very quickly uh, rather than be, be buried under that, that massive sort of bureaucracy that, that sort of comes inherently with a larger company. So that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, exactly that. Like, you know, the, 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 the merging of, new, of this small company within Intel, it's, it's a huge, huge challenge for Intel. Uh, most from you know from what I've heard, and I don't have numbers, but most of the this merge of all this this you know acquisitions are not really successful. Um, but hopefully, you know, this is how big companies maintain the, their innovation by buying new company by buying new startups, 
and and I, I believe in Intel, you know, my, from, again, from what I'm reading and, and hearing. Um, and this is another sign that they are doing what they need to do. If it will not be measured, it will be the next one. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that, that concludes our news uh, for this week. Andy. Yes. Okay. Well, a lot of stuff uh, going on, uh, obviously. And uh, I just wanted to ask uh, kind of what we've got to looking forward to next week. Uh, share what are the plans? Um, so next week, again, every week in the cloud is totally new. You know, you will have these uh, uh, new stories and new things that's going on. Um, Patrick, do you have any, you know, um, things that you know that's going, going to happen next week? Well, that's a good question. Um, as you know, the sort of cloud ecosystem and, and market moves very quickly. So we'll probably have some more merger and acquisition news to talk about. That's always interesting and, and helps us understand, you know, the direction of, of some of the big players, um, both in the cloud side and in the traditional side. And I hope to be able to bring to you, if not next week, the week after, some um, some news around what I'm doing on a full-time basis. So we'll look forward to those things. Uh, at the start of May, I'll be attending the Cloud 2020 sort of one-day conference. And if you're familiar with this, it's kind of the brainchild of uh, of, of two analysts in the space, Ben Keeps and uh, and and Krish uh, Submarinian. And so we're gonna I'm gonna attend that, and it's kind of an invite-only event where um, they're looking to get together some customers, some vendors, and then some analysts and bloggers, and sort of work through, you know, not only what the short term of infrastructure looks like, but you know what we can really look towards. That's hence the name Cloud 2020. What we can look towards in the future, where the trends are heading, that sort of thing. So that'll be um, the I, I believe it's the week after next. So that, that may be a good time to do the sort of pre-record of of what I'm doing and and sort of run that on the show. So. Um, yeah, lots to look forward to, and uh, we'll be back with, uh, we'll try to keep you as current with sort of the, the movement of cloud news as we can. Well, Patrick, that sounds like a lot to look forward to. want to thank you, on fear for joining us here today. Incidentally, if you want to follow them on Twitter, at Cloud Chronicle is the Twitter handle for Patrick. At I am on demand for Ophir, I am Andy Bukaski at AXMC. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Cloud Chronicle. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week on SDR News.